Welcome back to the second session in All Grip Systems Maintenance and Care. In this section, we'd like to cover water spotting. What is water spotting? Well, it's an unsightly issue that plagues boats of all sizes and can lead to the paint and surface damage if left untreated. This can happen to glass or stainless steel. This is not limited to paintwork. And I hope the following slides will help us understand in how to limit this and the causes such as acid rain or residues of cleaning materials that may be harmful to the paint surface and when being diluted by water, etch into the paint, causing damage. Water spotting on exterior paintwork is almost inevitable. However, in nearly all cases, if dealt with correctly, water spotting can be managed, minimised, and in many cases, effectively removed. The water in this case is the carrier. It dissolves the pollution, which can become extremely aggressive to the yacht exterior surfaces when in hot weather, etching or bleaching the surface. This can cause discoloration, surface etching, surface imperfections, and an increase in a haze and a decrease in your gloss. These look to be visible blotches or patterns on the surface of your vessel. We need to consider how the pollutants dissolve within the water. This can be from residue of cleaning materials, or from acidic rain in many cases. Water spotting can be broken down into two categories. We have mineral deposits and chemical etching. To help understand these, we've classified them as per the paragraph below. The mineral deposits, also known as type one, are above surface mineral deposits, abbreviated in this presentation as ASMD and depicted in the top image of this page. Our second category, chemical etching or erosions, can be known as type two or type three. These are below surface water spot etching, abbreviated in this presentation to BSWSE, the lower picture on this page. So let's look at type one, the above surface mineral deposit. This is when the surface of the paint, glass, or even stainless steel handrails have contamination from the minerals left after the water has evaporated from the surface. These deposits can often be washed off using strong detergent or vinegar solutions. But we need to take note, depending on the type of mineral present, the length of time that it's been on the surface or the temperature that it's been exposed to, it may have become baked on. These aren't always easy to remove and sometimes can still remain after cleaning. If left untreated, the cleanable, removable type one etching can become a type two. This is when it becomes a below surface water spot etch. This is when the microscopic etchings may have occurred in the uppermost layer of the paint film, actually damaging the surface. The three pictures below show typical type two etching of different surfaces. For me, the most interesting being the right hand picture, being a glass panel. As we previously mentioned, water spotting is not only a phenomenon seen on paintwork, it can also occur on stainless steel and glass. So the final stage in our water spotting is type three. This is where the type two water spotting has been left untreated 
and is allowed to grow in size and severity, etching the surface of the paint. This can result in a camouflage type pattern, known now in the trade as leopard effect. Once type 2 water spotting has occurred, droplets of water are attracted to the same hydrophilic area and in turn are allowed to grow if left untreated. In this slide, we try to depict the size of the water spotting from A through to C. A, one to two millimetres, B, three to five millimetres, and C, five millimetres and above. The water spot shapes and sizing is almost always in relation to the orientation of the exterior surface. So what do we mean by this? On a vertical surface, you will normally see sizes A to B. This is due to the runoff of the water not being allowed to puddle on the surface. Where on a horizontal surface, the water is allowed to lay in larger pools, causing larger imperfections or etching. On white coatings, water spotting may be extremely difficult to see and even harder to accurately photograph or determine the extent. Sometimes, due to the angle of the sun, whether it be early in the morning or late at night, it can be more prominent than others. Or when using polarised sunglasses, as these make the phenomenon appear more easily. To enable you to size your water spots, if you don't have a ruler, you could always place a business card or a pen and pencil next to it to help you categorise and understand the effect. In the previous slides, we've talked about types of water spotting and graded them and touched a little bit on their size and how they grow. What we want to do now is to go into slightly more detail to explain how this happens. We talked earlier about the surface becoming etched from the contamination or impurities within the water itself. This means when we have further water on the surface or rain, the water will form in the previously etched area. However, when the droplet becomes so big that it's unable to contain the water within that boundary, the water will creep outside of the etched area. And if the new water contains any impurities, the etching process will start again, becoming larger and creeping and growing in size. So to help us summarise about water spotting, it doesn't only affect paintwork, as we can see from the photos on this slide. It can be on wood surfaces, glass and stainless steel, and at different severities, such as type 1, type 2 or type 3, as previously stated. So what are the main causes? Chemical attack from boat and deck cleaners are a big part of this. Acid rain or poor maintenance, or the wrong time of day in cleaning. This is all about process and how we manage our cleaning. And we need to consider our pH neutral products to eliminate any contaminated water sitting on the surface, eventually etching and damaging our paintwork. If these type one watermarks are formed by salts or calcium deposit, we are able to remove these if done quickly. If allowed to build up on the surface, they may act as an abrasive during the wash down and start the etching process. Removing the stubborn salt and calcium deposits can be quite easy if we catch them early enough in the process. Using a mix in a one-to-one -one solution of distilled white vinegar and warm water you can agitate the surface 
with a soft rag, dissolving and removing the calcium buildup. We recommend that immediately afterwards, you rinse the surface down and wash with our all wash pH neutral soap. Thoroughly washing and rinsing will allow you to remove any of the vinegar solution left on the surface, stopping any further etch in the future. It's always good practice after use to wash your vessel down with fresh water to remove the salt and calcium contamination, as if they remain on the surface in the baking sun, the water will dry, leaving the deposit to etch to the surface. This is probably an obvious part of this, but a major part nevertheless. We've talked about the water being the carrier of the pollutant, dissolving it and causing etching if left on the surface. So one of the best recommendation after cleaning any painted surface or if there is water present on the surface for any prolonged periods of time is the removal of that water or carrier. And we can use many materials on the market or aids such as chamois or water scraping blades. We need to make sure that these are paint safe but the removal of the water will limit any water spotting in the future. If we can take away the carrier, we can reduce the problem. I hope you found the previous slides interesting in explaining water spotting and etching and why we may see some of the imperfections we do on our beautiful vessels, whether it be on the paintwork, the glasswork or the highly polished stainless steel. If you require any further information, please do get in touch to your local All Grip representative or distributor. And please remember, there is a third and final instalment to this presentation. Thank you.